This week on First Date, how far into a relationship until you say, I love you? As long as I can possibly go. <laughs> Do you have any favorite films? Uh, Butt Mistresses from Vaselina. Is that a porno? Yeah. <laughs> Now that sounded horrible. This is a first date. <laughs> Nobody talks like that. I'm so excited to see you tonight. First date, baby. First date, I can't wait. First date. Welcome to another episode of First Date. Today, my guest is a Texas native. He is a New York Times bestselling author. He's a stand-up comedian. You probably remember him from the Blue Collar Comedy Tour. You might know him as Tater Salad. You guys, help me welcome Ron White. Okay. So, on this date, Ron. Yes. I have a menu here. Okay. And I've got a couple questions. I've got appetizer questions. So, we're going to start getting into it a little easy. Okay. I'll butter you up. All right. Then the main course questions, we get a little deeper. And then we end with a dessert question. And if there's anything you don't want me to ask or say, we can have a like a code word. Like, like a, a safe word. A safe word. Yeah, okay. Do you want to have a safe word? Well, it's, it's this. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if I make that signal, move to the next, next, uh, question. next appetizer. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll have the calamari. That's noted. Okay. And then we'll end with a dessert question to sweeten it back up at the end. This is your podcast. We can do anything you want to do. Oh, my what do goodness. I, what do I win if I get all the correct questions right? A second date. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> um, so we'll start off with some appetizer questions. Pretty easy. What's your love language? My love language is, uh, is, is Spanish. That, that's <laughs> so you're into... <laughs> I don't even know what a love language is. What do you mean? <laughs> like uh, physical touch, words of affirmation, gifts. There's five. I should have studied before this goddamn questionnaire. <laughs> uh, uh, you know what? I I got to tell you, I'm a I'm a dyed in the wool cuddler. So if that's a love language, uh, so whoever physical I'm physical touch, I'd say with physical touch. Then yeah, because I I like to sleep holding someone. Yeah. And uh and, and I also like to be held. And you like uh, to be the little spoon too. I like to be the little spoon, the the and the big spoon. So yeah. I and, and you know what? And I, and I just can't have it any other way. I just can't be in bed. I have a girlfriend and uh and, and we hold each other at night, every night. Yeah. And, and uh and go to sleep that way. Do you so, keep your room cold? Freezing cold. How cold? Sixty eight. That's not freezing. Well, what? I, well, I'm not hanging raw meat in there. I mean, just, all we do is sleep. I like to keep the room like 55. 50, I don't even know of an air conditioning system in Texas that can get a room down to 55. It breaks a lot. I bet it does. I bet it does. <laughs> um, what do you wear to sleep? Nothing. Just balls out. Balls out. Nothing. What does your girlfriend wear to sleep? Uh, usually she'll wear a uh, she'll wear a little top, little t shirt. That's cute. And uh, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> that's what she wears. <laughs> I thought there was something else. No, there's no no pants, no no nothing. I mean, you mean another comment? It's a no pants there. party. It's a no pants party, and uh, and and nobody can come except for me. <laughs> what? Now that sounded horrible. This is a first date. <laughs> Nobody talks like that. Nobody talks like that on a first date. Nobody so I guess does. we know how you feel about open relationships. I don't. Uh, I don't believe in them. I don't believe they work. Yeah. So uh, I, I have a connection with my girlfriend that I know through past mistakes that I would lose that connection if I had an open relationship, and I like the way it feels to be connected to her. Yeah. How many long? term relationships have you had uh one uh two three four i think that lasted you know over three or four years yeah have you ever yes <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I'm 68 years old, you know, or 66. So I, I, I can't imagine a question you come up with that I'd say no to. So yes, <laughs> I, yes. How do you get out of a terrible date? Well, you know what? I, 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 I don't. I, I'll tell you how I get out of a a, a terrible relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I, I tell them I'm leaving and I'm taking the dogs. And then when they say you can't take those dogs, I say okay, you take the dogs, and then I leave. And they feel like <laughs> they feel like they won something, right? They just got two bets that they weren't going to have before, and then I've lost some really decent dogs in this. <laughs> I have a horrible. It's to, to lose a really good dog, but sometimes you got to take the punch, you know. <laughs> I got a new dog now, so and uh, yeah. Yeah, I do have a a, a nine week old micro Bernadoodle. What the fuck is that? It's just a little dog. It was so cute in the picture, and now it's just a a, a, a fucking nightmare. <laughs> and my girlfriend's dog is a, like a thirteen year old Shih Tzu, and this little dog grabs her by the tail and drags her around the room, and she can't defend herself because she can't reach it. <laughs> Because she's got the b b tail end of it. I, I can show you footage. It's just hilarious. I mean, I know it's sad for Sophie because she's getting <laughs> dragged around by the tail. But for me, it's really fucking funny. Great content. Uh, <laughs> I'm filming it going, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> no, though I don't mean stop it. I mean, keep yanking it. This is of hilarious. Course. Good footage. Um, do you have any hidden or useless talents? Hidden or useless talents. You know what? I'm as I, I'm as big a one trick pony as I've ever met in my life. So uh, I do stand up comedy for a living. I have no other skills at all. I'm <laughs> naturally lazy, as you can imagine. <laughs> the pandemic was heaven for me because I really got to be as lazy as I am, and I could act like I was being forced into it. Yeah. But the whole time I was bad. Asking at it, just for full, sure. this is the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> Coming on tw 26 years of nonstop touring. Yeah. To just be able to sit down for 15 months and. Oh. What's your guilty pleasure? Uh, you know what? God, it'd have to be masturbation. <laughs> and, uh, and I really don't feel that bad about it. So I, I guess it's not really a, not really a guilty pleasure. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, I like to rub one off, you know. Has and your girlfriend I, ever walked in on you masturbating? I I think so. You know, I was trying to sneak <laughs> one. So? I, yeah, well, you know, I was in the same bed. And I think she was hip to what I was doing, and she just <laughs> didn't want to stop me. And because uh, she knew she'd have to participate and wake <laughs> up and, you know, get get involved. And It's going to be horrible if she listens to this. <laughs> Do you watch any TV shows or like have any favorite films? A f favorite film? Like a favorite movie? Me? That you watch over and over again. Nonstop. Uh, Butt Mistresses from Vaselina. Is that a porno? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what else is going to have that name? I, I used to watch Peaches Goes to the Logging Camp uh, a lot, but I got sick of it. Yeah. Because I know what's going to happen. Peaches isn't going to find her dad. Yeah. You know, and all, all, there be, all these people lie to her and they take advantage of her. And I think Peaches has a good nature and I think she's made some bad decisions in her life. And that's how she ended up at the logging camp looking for her father. As far as I know, neither one of those are real movies. Yeah, but I think that you've just gifted the porn industry with two great concepts. Right. You, yeah, you deserve they're, residuals on those. They're, no, they're free. I'll take four bucks. <laughs> For every hard copy you sell, send me $4. <laughs> How far into a relationship until you feel free to fart? About 30 minutes. <laughs> I mean, not out loud, but, you know, if I feel like I'm in an environment where it could possibly have come from somewhere else and I feel like I'll feel better if I farted, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and fart. Do you claim him? No. No, I ignore <laughs> it. I Just like I do on planes. I just let it go and, you know, it's a fart. It's going to happen. No you know, one knows. It's, it's not a guilty pleasure. I don't feel bad about it at all. Yeah. <laughs> 
just like whacking off. Just human nature. That's all it is to me. <laughs> How fast when the plane lands do you stand up? I assume you're always in first class, though. Yes. So you're just straight off the plane. Straight off the plane. Uh, I usually have my luggage on uh, board. I, I travel with the dog for years, and uh, somebody stole them. And uh, <laughs> But for years, I traveled with my French bulldog, Mustard. And so he went with me on every flight for five years. So probably, you know, 400 cities Yeah. with that dog. And uh, But I, I, I get up and get off the plane. I got shit to do. I get it. Do you do you love to travel? No, I hate it. Are you over it from the touring? Yeah, you know what? I it's it was so I I, I had a blast doing it uh, for thirty five years, and then the last two that I toured, I haven't toured any this year at all, and uh, I just go down to Rogan's Club, the Mothership, which is glorious, and mm-hmm. do sets down there. But I quit touring and. Uh, and as far as I know, I'm going to be quit forever. I don't know. Really? Somebody offered me a bunch of dates for next year, and it made me sick to my stomach. So, uh, so I don't think I'm going to take any of them. Yeah. What is your favorite pastime? I play a lot of golf. I played golf this morning. Did you? Yes. And, and then I got a pedicure. And then I came to see you. Oh, goodness. You got fancy for me. I did. Put on a clean shirt, cleanish. <laughs> anyway. Hey, that's a green flag. I'll take that. Clean clothes. Yeah. A green flag. <laughs> How do you feel about hygiene? I uh, I like it when the chick don't stink. That's what I like. That's good. What yeah. if What if you were having sex with a girl and she lifted up her arms and she had armpit hair? And she had armpit hair. Yeah. But it smelled okay. Sure. Oh, I wouldn't care at all. Huh. I mean, I would go. Well, oh, got hairy armpits, but I would. I would keep going. Yeah. Even if she stank a little bit. I mean, just a little bit of B.O. Even then you're... Well, if I was already going, you know, I'm not going to stop because of, oh, get out of here. Of course. But, you know, my girlfriend's really clean, so... Yeah. We're going to get into some main course questions now. What's a deal breaker for you? Oh, a deal breaker in a relationship? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Uh, You know, somebody that won't give me space uh, to do what I do. Like clingy? Well, just uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, When I go to the the club and do sets, I really like to go by myself because it's a tribal hang in that green room that, that I thrive on. So... So I need somebody that respects the fact that I need that thing by myself and they can't go with me. And it was the same way when I was in L.A., when I would go down to the store or whatever, whatever relationship I was in, it was completely off limits. I do this by myself. But I also, it's that way with friends of mine. It's also that way with managers or agents. Nobody goes with me to do these shows. I have to do those sets by myself. Now, if it's a big show, then I don't care who's there. I don't care at all, but I need this hang. I need this. It's really important to me to hang out with other comics talking about stand-up comedy. And the best place in the world for that is at uh, the mothership in that green yeah. room. That is, a, that is a place where all comics should aspire to one day have permission to go to. Yeah. Because uh, that is cool as shit. Amazing. What is the most important thing to you in a relationship besides space? Like if you're talking about like communication... <laughs> Or honesty. You know, uh, uh, oral sex is pretty important. I, I don't know about you, but I enjoy a good blowjob. That's for sure. That's a form uh, of communication. It sure is. It sure is. <laughs> and I don't mind walking somebody through it. You know, if they're not doing it right. Yeah. I, you know, I don't mind. That's fine. I'll Tell show them how them, to do it. I'll show them a video or whatever. And, uh, and and get them back on track. So <laughs> I could just see you whip out a porn and you're just like, this is exactly what I want you to do. That's exactly what I do. <laughs> I mean, it is. Because why, you know, why leave guesswork in it? It's, the work's been done. Porn is sex education. It's important for everybody. Yeah. People should communicate by watching porn and they go, do that. Because sometimes people are a little 
a little taken aback and and or or, or a little shy to say this is what I really want. Right. Uh, but if you're watching a movie and they seem to like it, and what the fuck, let's give it a try. Yeah. You know? Out of all of the relationships that you've had, what do you think is something that you've learned the most from all of the relationships? Uh, that my current girlfriend hates anal. Oh. <laughs> Some people feel that's an exit only. I know, I know, and I don't, I don't, I don't get it, but I don't care either because some women like it. That's fine. I don't care. It's not like I'm dying to do that, but she, she doesn't like it at all. Maybe loosen her up, get her a cocktail. Well, I've tried it, and uh, <laughs> and, it, and it didn't work at all. So, I don't know. how far into a relationship until you say I love you? As long as I can possibly go. <laughs> It really is. I drag that one out. I don't. I don't throw that "I love you" stuff around. You have you know? told your girlfriend you love her? Yes, of course. How long have y'all been together? Three years. Okay. How long did you wait until you said it? A year, at least. I, th I think, but I'm just careful not to say it. Yeah. Until I really mean it, you know. And then when I mean it, I don't have a problem saying it. Yeah. Do you think you'll get married again? No. Does she want to get married? No. What if she did want to get married? She'd have to get married to someone else. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she doesn't because our, our, our lives are are pretty simple the way they are now. And, and, and some kind of paperwork deal would really make that complicated. Yeah. And, uh, and the reason is we both have money and we both have kids. And we already know what we want to do with that money, you know, which is my money goes to my kids and her money goes to her kids. And, and uh, we don't want to compl uh, complicate that. She doesn't want to, just the same as me. That's fair. So, yeah, just uh, it's a, a piece of government paperwork. I mean, if there was some big reason to do it uh, that I don't know about, you know, I would I would do it. I would marry her. Yeah. If I, but there's no reason to at all that I can think of. And I love my current dog. So <laughs> yeah, I really don't want to, I don't want to give up uh, Smudge. Oh, that's a cute name too. Smudge. Smudge is a cute dog. He's ridiculously cute. Where is the craziest place you've ever had sex? Oh, you know, I, 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 I think I'm kind of a straight guy, kind of boring almost, I guess. But, uh, you know, the uh, I can't even think, you know, a train. A, you know, it's not nothing exciting. The Mile balcony me of the I'm not a member of the Mile High Club. Uh, I'm a member of the Mile Ahead Club. That's where you fuck someone behind a Cracker Barrel billboard. <laughs> Have you ever done that? Where you no. just drag them behind the billboard and fuck them? Fuck them, yeah. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh that's a great club to be in. I you never should. even thought about being in the Mile Ahead Club. You're thinking about it now. I sure am. I might have to go do that. I hate feeling left out. Yeah, right. It's and, the worst. And you're being left out of this. I'm so left out. I'm yeah. a mile behind. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> What are your thoughts on condoms? I, you know, I haven't used one, and I don't even know how long. <laughs> I had a vasectomy, and and uh, you know, I really only have sex with one person, so yeah, I'm kind of a one woman guy. So, and I always kind of have been. Not that I've always been perfect about it, but I, you know, at this age, I'm pretty fucking perfect about it. So. Yeah. Do you think that being a famous stand-up comic has helped your relationships or hurt them? I think, you know, both. I, you know, I, I I probably got into <laughs> more trouble, but, you know, just because I'm I'm more dateable because of my status as a sure. comic. So, you know, the, uh, but I still haven't, you know, I... I, I, I I, I think it. I think it helps. Uh, oddly enough, my girlfriend and her late husband used to go see me every year at the Mirage. He was a fan, mm -hmm. and uh, he was six foot two, handsome guy. Played a lot of golf, and his name was Ron. 
And so I don't really think that she moved on more than <laughs> she got a placeholder, somebody else that was at that show, which happens to be me from the stage. So, and uh, But we met at a charity function uh, in Beverly Hills and... Uh, and and she is, she's adorable, smart, very successful, and uh, you know, yeah, great partner. Um, what is the main quality you look for in a partner? I like to have somebody who, at, at this point in my life, somebody who has achieved something in their life. You know, so and not that they need money; I, that's not a requirement at all. Uh, but it's okay if they have it, if they've, or whatever. I just like to see somebody that's done something with their life. Yeah. You know, uh, because now, you know, it's okay when you're young, but at, at this point, I'm just more interested in someone that's, that's made something out of themselves. It's just, I totally get that too. Cause it, it's, it's more a character trait on their behalf that they're a hustler and a go getter and they're not lazy they want to strive to have something right. more because we've already covered. I got lazy covered big time. So yeah. Uh, so now that's I just like to be with somebody that's that's had some accomplishments in their life. That, yeah. That they're proud of too. So that's fair. It goes both ways. Yeah, it does. What if you went on a date with a girl and she got blacked out drunk? Uh, well, I don't drink. I don't know if you know that or not, but I, I, I haven't drank for two and a half years. Congratulations. And, uh, 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 <laughs> well, I don't, you know, people say that all the time, but they never say it like they mean it. They're always I, more of a, a, a surprise congratulations, like you just gave me. Well, yeah, me. it is surprising. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, so I have uh, just, I have zero tolerance for drunk women. Uh drunk really drunk men also but drunk women are the worst and uh so if i found a the blacked out girl i would just call her a uber or yeah. find a way to get her home safely but i would not be interested in pursuing that at all usually drunk girls are loud kind of obnoxious yeah they are and uh and you know you're going to end up holding their hair out of a bunch of vomit you know, it just never works out good yeah ever it's just uh it's uh atrocious so i, I really don't have much tolerance for that why did you stop drinking Oh, you know, pretty boring question. You know, I just uh, was a raging alcoholic for uh, <laughs> a long, long time. And and uh, we started seeing some signs of uh, uh, some bad numbers on my liver. And and well, the, and also the that. writing was on the wall, you know, that if, I, if I'll be 70 in three years. So I got to take, I got to be in some kind of better shape. I can't be stumbling around. Uh, it's really pathetic what I uh what i had become and uh although it was a harmless drunk you know but in a fun drunk and uh uh but it was starting to really destroy me and i saw other people that you know that were my age or a little older really struggling with that and just just for balance issues you know yeah. they, they fall a lot and uh so i th i just didn't want to be as this old pathetic drunk so i quit drinking that was the that's that the only way to do it yeah so. now people say i heard you quit getting fucked up that's not true at all <laughs> i get real <laughs> fucked up almost every day and uh so i but i just have found a way to get to it that's a little better that yeah. works better for me and i don't regret it at all i don't miss it a bit and if there are people out there that are questioning whether you put not you, I thought I could not do that. I, could, I didn't think I could quit ever, ever, ever. And I did. So, and, and it's uh, the smartest thing I ever did, you know? Yeah. It, it's kind of like your generation doesn't seem to drink as much. Are you a Gen Z or what are you? I think I'm a millennial. You're like a younger millennial? I think so. I was born in 87. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're a millennial. That's a millennial, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, uh, but the Gen Z crowd, they don't really drink as much as uh, other generations did. And yeah. They, and they're, and the bar. But uh, they do tenders, tons of ketamine. Yeah, I know. Well, here we are. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, mushrooms and weed and whatever else, 
you know, I don't really much go further than that. You know, and I don't really like stimulants, hard stimulants, but, uh, but you know, but all the edibles that I can shove down my throat, that's fine. Yeah. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. When you go on a date, who, sh- who do you feel should pay on a first date? Absolutely me. Who do you feel should pay on a second date? Me. Do you feel And like- also, if I invite you someplace really nice, I should buy you an outfit to wear. And if we're going to some kind of a cowboy thing, I should buy your clothes. Uh, because I'm asking you to go, I want you to dress a particular way, I think I should pay for your clothes. Green flags all around. Right. My love language is gift giving. And I wish that it wasn't. I wish I wasn't <laughs> like that because it sounds like I come across as a gold digger and I'm not because I can buy my own things. But I feel like when someone does buy something for me, it makes me feel like they put a lot of thought into something they wanted me to keep. I don't have like a ton of things. So the things I have usually are very meaningful. So if I, I get something, I hold it way too close to me. And then if I lose it, I have a mental fucking breakdown. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that's just... Uh, I, 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 I have the means to pay for it. And so I, I really feel uncomfortable with a, a woman paying for my food. I don't care if they insist or whatever. I don't have a big thing about it. But I would always pay for the yeah. dinner and uh and whatever else needed to be paid for babysitters cabs whatever it costs to go on the date yeah and uh so but yeah that's what i do well i guess my la- one of my last questions for you if your girlfriend was gaining weight how would you tell her she's getting fat um well my girlfriend was a gymnast when she was young and she doesn't have that problem. She still has this core strength that is chimp like. <laughs> she is so strong. <laughs> I mean, if you can ever do uneven parallel bars, yeah. you you have a grip that'll kill anything for the rest of your life. And she's always stayed really, really fit. So uh I would never and I really I've never really dated anybody that <laughs> It got real fat, and except me. I mean, I got fat, but but let's say you were dating a stallion. Uh, yeah. Well, she's four eleven, so I wouldn't call her a stallion, but she's uh, <laughs> a pony. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, I would. Uh, you know what? Just because I'm smart, I would never mention it. Just stay. <laughs> yeah. Now, if it got out of hand uh, <laughs> too much, you know, I. I, uh, I I would probably just move on, but it was really hard when you got a gut like mine to say, what about that paunch you're growing there, sweetheart? You know, it's a, it's a problem with that. So um, I'd probably just avoid the conversation and That's then uh, move on. So my last question is the dessert question. And so we're going to end on something sweet. What is the sweetest thing you've ever done for someone you were with? The sweetest thing I've ever done for someone that I was with, um, I guess I, I put someone on my insurance. <laughs> that That's really a kind thing to do. That is they, so nice. That's so nice. No one's I, ever put me on their insurance. Yeah. <laughs> insurance is expensive, too. I know, I know, but, I, you know... I was just with somebody for a while and they didn't have insurance. So what am I going to do? I, you know, they got to have insurance, right? So, so I just put them on mine. I love that. And then broke up with them and snatched the insurance back. I don't oh know. man, they're not still on your insurance. Nah, you can't take them on forever. Uh, fair. Well, at the end of this show, we recap green flags and red flags. So your red flag was pretty much just that you're really fucking lazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is true, and that is the worst thing about me. Yeah, is that I'm lazy, and and I've gotten so comfortable with it. I don't apologize for it, <laughs> and uh, and I, you know, I, I I try to be my best quality is I'm a really good friend. You know, if I'm a a friend of yours, I'm a good friend, and I, I don't have a ton of friends, but the, the ones that I have can really count on me, 
and uh, so that's probably my, you know, my best quality. And then lazy is my worst. But you you also wear clean clothes. That's a great. I try flag. to sm- I try to smell nice. I you really smell do try nice. To, yeah. You look nice. You're generous. You buy really nice things for people that you care about. I mean, generosity is definitely a green flag. That's good. Well, thank you for coming on my show. Well, thank you for having me. It's been really fun and interesting. <laughs> you know, I've always heard that when someone says interesting, that's a red flag. Is that a red flag for me? Is it? Yeah, no, no, no. Interesting is good. It's, uh, you know, I didn't know what it was going to be like. So it's, uh, it's, it's fun and uh, has nice little twists and turns to it. You look fantastic, which is thank you. part of the show, I guess. And uh, 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 my favorite part. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, thanks for having me on the show. I yeah, it. It I'd love to have you back for a second date sometime. We'll do it. We'll Is do there it. anywhere people can find you? I mean, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the uh, I'm not touring at all, and uh, so I really don't have things to plug. I do sets at the mothership uh, quite a bit, but I, I can't tell anybody when those are. Yeah. Uh, because I don't know myself, you know, I just go in and do sets and like this set this week, I probably did 10 sets at the club. Wow. So, uh, but some weeks I don't go in, but not very often because I love it there. That's my place. So amazing. Yeah. So, uh, so I really don't have anything to sell or anything. (laughs) Well, um, I guess people are just going to have to rewatch this episode over and over and over again. If they want to do that, I, that would be fine with me. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. Thank you guys for watching another episode. We'll see you next time. First date, baby. Are you really drinking a glass of milk with dinner? First date, I can't.